This is your complete beginner's guide to the DJI Mavic Air 2. Whether you're a first time flyer or you've flown drones before, this is gonna go through everything you need to know on the drone, on the controller, in the app, and just some things to think about to be able to get better footage out of this drone. So first, I just wanna go over the outline of what is in this video. First, we're gonna talk about the drone itself all the features on the drone, everything you're gonna find on the drone. Second, we'll talk about the controller, then we'll go into the app, and then at the end of this video, we're gonna go into some ideas around how to get better looking footage. So I will talk about best settings, the settings that I would choose for cinematic looking video, and then also I'm gonna go into some just ideas around color grading and some things that you can do to make this footage really pop. All right guys, so let's get into the first section which is all about the drone itself. Now, when you first get the DJI Mavic Air 2, there's gonna be stickers all over this drone. And so what you really need to do is take some time, go through and pull off every one of these stickers. You're gonna find them on all the arms. You're actually gonna find them on the gimbal as well, on all the sensors. Just take some time and really go over your drone because you don't wanna leave any of these stickers on. Now, to fold out the drone, you first wanna flip out the front arms and then you can flip down the back arms. Now on the front, you're gonna find a gimbal guard. Now this is not to be left on while flying. It doesn't protect your camera from the elements. What this is for is to protect during transportation. So this is just to be left on while it's in your bag, while it's in your case, wherever you're taking this drone to. And then when you're ready to fly, you wanna pop this off. So there's a little clip on the bottom and you're gonna pop it forwards. And now you're ready to go. Now on the top is where you're gonna insert your battery. So you're just gonna put it straight down and you wanna hear a click. Now, to take out your battery, you just press on the two tabs on the side and lift straight up. Now, if we look at the front of your drone, what you're gonna see is two sensors. These are your obstacle avoidance. And then underneath that is your gimbal with your camera. And this should be free moving in every direction. Now, if we turn the drone clockwise, you're gonna see a little tab down on the bottom of your drone. You open this up and this has a USB-C port in it. What this is for is if you store on the internal memory, or you just wanna transfer by plugging the drone in directly to your computer. So you plug your computer in here, turn on your drone, and then you can transfer your data over. Now one question I get all the time is, can you charge using this port on the side? And you can't. This is only for data transfer. You have to pull the battery out and use the charger to be able to charge your battery. Now let's look at the back of this drone. And on the back, you'll see your obstacle avoidance sensors as well. Now let's turn it one more time clockwise and you're gonna see another little port on the bottom. This is where you insert your micro SD card. So you can fly using internal storage and you get eight gigabytes. However, that's not gonna last you very long. So I highly suggest you get a high capacity micro SD card, 32, 64, or 128 gigabytes. Now you can go bigger, however, I like to not put a ton of data on my micro SD cards because if something happened, A, you don't want to have the card corrupt and then you lose all your data, and B, if you crash this drone or lose it anyway, again, you lost all your data. So I like to fly with smaller cards so it forces me to offload everything, format the card, and then keep flying. So I'm constantly reminding myself to always dump the footage because the worst thing you can do is have like two weeks of amazing epic footage and then it all gets lost because your drone just decided to fly away, it took a dip, it hit a tree, or like the card got corrupted. Like there's a lot of things that could happen, not saying that it happens that often, but there are things that could happen. When I was in the Azores, I had the DJI Mavic Air version one, and I was flying across a lake, and I don't know if it was the seismic activity because it was a volcanic lake, but the drone decided just to take a dip just slightly. It dipped right in the water and popped right out, which was pretty cool that it actually survived. I was able to get it back, but somehow it fried the SD card and I lost all my data from the last like three days of shooting. So personally, you wanna offload your footage every day if possible. Now, if you're on a trip and you have nowhere to offload your footage, then just have multiple micro SD cards so you can swap them out so you don't have a ton of data that you lose all at once. So let's look at the bottom of this drone. You have your obstacle avoidance sensors on the bottom. This senses where the ground is when you're landing and you also have right in the center a landing light. Now this is awesome because at night or closer to sunset when you're bringing your drone back and you wanna land, this illuminates 
and it shows a pool of light so that you could see where your drone is landing to make sure that it's safe for it to land. I love that they incorporated this on this version of the Mavic Air 2. Now, the last thing I wanna go over is the propellers because you have two different types of propellers. Now you have to make sure that you put the proper propeller with the proper side. So on each propeller on the top of them, you'll see this little ring around the center. One is black and one is kind of a white grayish. And so you want to line up the white grayish one with the white side and the black one with the black side. This is because there's two different styles of propellers. And if you don't have it on the right side, it's not going to fly properly. So to put on your propellers, you line up the little tabs with the hole, you push down and you twist. And then what you want to do is just hold the motor and give it a little twist. Make sure it's on properly. You don't want one of these falling off. Now what's cool about DJI is in the app when you start flying, they actually remind you of this. There's a little pop-up that comes up right before you fly. You can turn this off. However, it's just a good reminder because you need to make sure that these are on properly before you actually take off and fly. Now, the last thing you need to understand about the body of the drone is how to turn it on. And to do this, you basically press once in the center and then hold it until you hear the drone power on. So it's a press and then a three to five second hold. Okay, so now that you understand everything on the drone, now let's go into the controller because you need to understand what all the buttons do on your controller before we dive into the app. So let's start with the front of the controller. When you look at it right in the front, you have four buttons, you have a little flip switch in the middle, and then you have your joysticks. So your joysticks actually live in the bottom of this controller, so you're gonna pull them out and screw them on. Now let's just go left to right. So up in the upper left hand corner, you have an F in button. This is a function button and you can set this to do a bunch of different things. And once we get into the app, I'll show you where you can actually set this to whatever makes sense for your flying style. Now the next button is your return to home button. So when you're out flying, if you don't wanna manually return to home, you just hold this button for a few seconds and then the drone will automatically go back to the start position. So when you launch your drone, it's gonna send a GPS signal and say, this is where I launched from. And then when you press and hold this button for a few seconds, your drone's gonna stop whatever it's doing, it's gonna turn around and it's gonna fly home. Now dead center, you have this flip switch and sport mode is great if you really wanna get your drone moving fast. Normal is just kind of like normal flying. This is your standard and then tripod is super slow. So if you wanna get super smooth cinematic shots, you're gonna throw it in a tripod mode and it's gonna be much easier to get that. Now next to that is your power button and it's just like your battery. You press once and then you hold until you hear the beep and then your controller is powered on. And same thing, you click once and you hold to power off. Now in the upper right hand corner, it's gonna flip between video and photo mode. Now let's look at the top of your controller. You have one jog wheel and then you have a button. Now your jog wheel controls the gimbal. So it's gonna control the gimbal going down to up. Super easy, that's all it does. Now on the other side is your record or your camera button. So when you're flying, you just click this button in the upper right hand corner. It's either gonna start your video recording or it's gonna take a photo, depending on what mode you are in. Now on the bottom of your controller, you have your USB-C port. This is where you charge from. And then on the top is where you mount your phone. To mount your phone, you pop out this top element. You can see that it moves to adjust to the size of your phone. And then you'll see a little cable when you look in. When you pop off your left side, that's what connects to your phone, and the right side is what connects to the controller. And DJI supplies a bunch of different cables depending on which type of phone that you're using to fly with. So you mount your phone so it fits nice and snug, you plug in the controller, and then you're good to go to start flying. All right, so now let's jump into the app. So the first thing you wanna do is put your phone in, attach the cable, turn on your controller, turn on the drone, because we're just doing the setup and going through this together, I highly suggest taking off the propellers just so you don't have any issue where you might accidentally take it off. Maybe you're inside, maybe you're somewhere where you shouldn't be flying. So first things first, let's get into the app. Basically what you wanna do is hit connect aircraft in the lower right hand corner. And you're gonna see that there's the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air 2. So you're gonna click on the Mavic Air 2. So the first time that you connect to your aircraft, there's gonna be a whole activation sequence that DJI sets up. Super easy to do, just walk through it step by step. It's going to ask for your DJI account, so if you don't have one yet, you're gonna to need to set one up. Read through each screen and follow the instructions. So there's gonna be one screen that pops up that talks about your joystick configuration. Just choose recommended for now. If you wanna go through later and change it up, you can do that in the settings. I'll show you where you can do that, but everything that I'm gonna be talking about in this video uses the recommended settings. Okay, so now that you have your activation set up, 
when you enter the camera view, this is the screen that you're going to see. So we're just gonna go systematically around the screen and we're gonna talk through what each button does and we're gonna go into the menus and actually go through what you need to know to be able to fly this drone without any questions. So in the upper left-hand corner, when you hit this arrow, it's gonna go back to the main screen. Now it looks like I have an update, so right here you're gonna click the update button and it's gonna go through and update your drone. So I always suggest before you start flying, before you go out to somewhere where you're not gonna have any sort of Wi-Fi signal, that you make sure your drone is completely up to date. So go in here, turn it on when you're at home and check and see if there's an update. Because the worst thing you can do is get somewhere and then all of a sudden it needs an update and for some reason it doesn't fly. So now let's go back to the fly screen, which is the go fly. So we click go fly. The next button over is what mode you're in. Currently I'm in normal. So if I flip on the controller over to tripod, you'll see tripod pop up. And if you click over to the far right, you'll see sport mode. It also comes up with a flash right in the middle of the screen to tell you what mode you're going into. Next to that is the status of your drone. So right now my needs a compass calibration. So you might pop up with this error where you need to calibrate the compass. So let me just show you quickly how you do that. You're gonna click that button, click the red right on the top, and you're gonna calibrate. Just click the calibration button. DJI is now gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to do this. Click start, we're gonna rotate around this way, and then we're gonna flip it up, rotate around this way, and then it'll pop up with either successful or failed. If it's failed, try moving to a different section of where you're at and do it again. So just now it failed for me standing right here, I walked back to the back of my set and then it was successful. So you might have to play around with this to be able to get your calibration to work properly. Also, it might just be the way that you're holding it. So adjust your spinning style, maybe rotate like this. Sometimes it takes a few times before it will get fully calibrated. So now instead of a red box there, it says take off permitted. So now I know I can take off. So if you click that again, you're gonna go into a pre-flight check. This is awesome that DJI has included this. So first it's gonna give you your notifications. This is where the calibration was. Right now it's telling me my lighting environment's too dark because I'm in my studio and it's super dark in here. So it's just a warning just telling you what's going on. Now auto RTH altitude. That means auto return to home altitude. So when your drone decides to return home, it's going to go to this altitude from the point when you took off. So it's not just that altitude in the world, it's that altitude from the point where you took off and up. So 30 meters above where you took off, and then it's gonna fly back. So you could set this higher, or you could set this lower. It just depends on the situation you're in, but 30 is a good place to have it set for now. Just think if there's trees around or something else, you might need to make that higher so that you're always making sure that you don't hit something on the way back. Now, underneath that is flight protection. So you have your max altitude and your max distance. So you change these depending on the situation you're in. And if you put it above the max altitude, it's gonna come up with this little warning that says you might be in violation of local laws. Now, underneath that, it's gonna show you your SD card and your internal storage. So it shows you how much you have left. So right here, you can format both of these. And if you're following what I was talking about earlier, you would offload all your footage and then you would format before you fly so that each card is just fresh and you're not just adding tons and tons of data onto each card. You wanna make sure that you format your card in between flights, obviously after you've offloaded it onto your computer or your phone. And then on the bottom of that, it's gonna show your record time remaining. Now this is gonna change depending on the settings that you use for your flight. 4K60 is gonna burn up a lot more data than 1080p 24 frames per second. So just keep that in mind. Your remaining time will fluctuate depending on the settings that you set. Now the next button over is your optical avoidance sensors and this will show up red when your sensors are turned off. The one next to that is showing your satellites. So right now I'm connected to 14 satellites. It'll give you a warning if you're not connected to enough satellites yet to be able to fly and use a proper GPS signal. Next to that is your remote control connection. Right now I have full connection and it will tell you if it starts dropping as you're flying. And then the little battery next to that is the battery of your drone. So right now mine's at 35%. I should probably swap out the battery but I'm not gonna take a flight, we're just in my studio. So for now, that's fine. But when you're actually flying next to it is gonna show your estimated flight time left. So in the upper right hand corner, you have a menu and this is gonna go through a bunch of different options and we'll go into that next. But first I wanna keep going on this main screen. Underneath that is all your camera settings. The big red button is your record. Underneath that is your footage. So this is all the footage that's currently on my drone right now and you can go through and play it, you can scrub through, you can download it to your phone. There's a lot of ways to be able to take this footage, bring it to your phone, and do some cool stuff that you could share with social media. The little camera icon in the lower right-hand corner turns it from auto to manual. 
And so when it's in auto, you have two options. You have exposure lock and then you have EVF adjustment. So your exposure lock basically means that whatever your image looks like right now, it's gonna lock your exposure settings. And next to that is your exposure compensation. So the EV basically means that it's gonna take the auto settings and bump it up or down based on what you set here. So let's say I set plus one. So what that's gonna do is use the auto settings and add a stop of light to it. So if you're flying using auto and everything's looking dark, you would bump this up by the plus button. And the same thing, if you're flying and everything's looking very overexposed, then you'd bring this down and basically it's gonna take the auto settings and adjust the baseline. So what it thinks auto is, it's gonna now make that a little bit darker. Now let's flip it into manual. So you click that little button in the lower right hand corner and now you can adjust your shutter manually. You can adjust your ISO and it's gonna give you a little indication in the lower right hand corner whether it thinks that it's too dark or too bright. So this little M.M, the camera's metering what it thinks the exposure is and then telling you your 2.7 stops under what the camera thinks you should be filming at. So this is just an indication to say, oh, I'm filming a little bit darker or I'm filming a little brighter than what the camera thinks I should be filming at. Now dead center is a little indication of where the aircraft is in relation to the controller. So I'm pointed towards you right now and my drone is right here off to my left. And I love this feature because when I'm out flying and I'm looking at what I'm filming, I could just be like, oh, my camera's at you know 11 o'clock and it's easy to find. And also when flying back, I know which way to point the joysticks to bring it back because I can quickly see an indication of where the drone is. Now next to that is your distance and your height. So this is just your indication of how high your drone is and how far away your drone is. Now in this lower left-hand corner is your map icon. So when you click this, it's going to show where the drone is on a map. Now on this full screen map, you're gonna see indications of where no-fly zones are. So as you can see, I'm just pointed over Burbank right now and it's a crazy no-fly zone. LA is crazy, like if, when you look all around LA, there are so many airports. So it's really hard to fly here. So that's why I have to go places out of the city to be able to fly because there's a lot of restricted zones here. So in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see your screen and when you click that, it's gonna go back to full screen mode. But this is a great way to be able to just see where your drone is on a map and you could fly using that while still being able to see a little bit of your image in the lower left-hand corner. I'll flip back and forth between these, and this is an option that you can set on this FN button. You can swap those quickly. On the right-hand side, you have a bunch of options for this map. So on the top of it, you have your eye, and then this allows you to toggle on and off all the restricted zones and warning zones. Now underneath that, we'll erase the fly data because as you're flying, it's gonna draw lines around where you're at. Now the button underneath that will be where the aircraft is or where the home point is. So it's gonna center the map around either of those. Now the button underneath that toggles between true north and the direction that you're actually pointed with the controller. And then underneath that, you can go from standard to satellite, to mixed. So you have different map options depending on how you want to look at this map. Now underneath that is a find my drone option and this is if you lost your drone. So you have two buttons on the bottom. One says use other maps. It's going to pull it up into a different map option on your phone and then next to that is start flashing and beeping. So you click that. It's now flashing and it's beeping. So if you lost your drone and you're trying to find it, this helps you recover it easier. And then in the upper left-hand corner, you click that button, it goes back. Okay, so now we're back at the main screen. So there's one more button on the screen and that's your takeoff and landing button. You click this, it's gonna ask you if you wanna take off. So it's gonna automatically take off your drone and then it's gonna hover. And then the same thing, when you're hovering, you bring it down, you can click this and it will land the drone. Okay, let's click the three dots in the upper right-hand corner. Now we're gonna just go through some of the things that you have in your menu. Safety, that's the first thing. So you had some of this on your pre-flight checklist, but here's another place where you can access and change these settings. So max altitude, max distance, auto return to home altitude. You can update your home point here. Underneath that is flight assistance, and you have two options. You have obstacle detection. So that's the sensors that are around your drone to make sure you don't run into something. And then advanced pilot assistance system, APAS. Underneath that, you have your sensors, you have your compass. This is where you can calibrate it if you wanna do it manually. IMU, this is another thing that you can calibrate. You're not gonna to need to touch these unless it gives you a warning up front and it says you need to calibrate this and it will pop up with that warning. Underneath that, you have your auxiliary LED, so mine's set to auto. When you click the on button, there it is, nice and bright. It's going to illuminate wherever you're at, and then you could set it to off if you don't wanna use it. I just left mine set to auto, but if you do wanna switch it on and off here, this is where you can do it. Underneath that is an option to unlock geozones. 
Now underneath that, you have your advanced safety settings. So in this menu setting, you have signal lost and emergency propeller stop. So with signal lost, this is just telling the drone what to do if you lose contact with your controller. I have mine set to return to home. However, if your home is moving, say you're on a boat or something, then you might not want to return to home. The better option might be to descend if you're somewhere where you want the drone just to come down from the sky because there might be obstacles like planes and different things like that. And the other option is to hover. So if you're in a situation where you don't want it to return to home and you were flying somewhere where you know you can easily get closer to the drone so you can return your signal, then you'll leave it on hover. The easiest one is just return to home. Majority of the time we're in one spot flying and we want the drone to come back to us and by the time it starts coming back, you'll get signal back with the controller. Emergency propeller stop. This should be on emergency only. You can turn this on any time. However, if it's on any time, what will happen is if you put your sticks in these two directions, the drone will fall out of the sky because the propellers will stop. And there are times where I will maneuver the drone in certain ways where I'm actually doing this configuration, but it's just to make the drone move a certain way. And so you don't wanna have it on any time because then that would cause your drone to fall out of the sky. And the last option on the safety menu is remote identification. And so you have your options to add in all your information here. All right, let's go into the second settings, which is your controls. So from here, you can set up from metric to imperial, gimbal mode, you have follow mode, or you have FPV mode. Next is allow upward gimbal rotations. So without this turned on, your gimbal's gonna stop kind of at horizon, dead straight ahead. If you turn this on, the gimbal will start to go up. So if you want that little bit of extra up angle, I would suggest turning this on. I fly with this on because there are times where I am down lower and I wanna see just a little bit more of like the tree line or the skyline or whatever it is. You know, a lot of times when I'm out flying by mountains, when you're flying, you don't actually see the tops of the peaks. So this allows you to be able to tilt the camera up just enough where you actually could see that skyline and it makes better shots. Now next is your gimbal calibration. So if you need to recalibrate your gimbal, you can do that. You can hit recenter gimbal right underneath that and it's going to center up your gimbal. Now the next under control goes into your remote control settings. First is phone charging. So if you turn this on, what's gonna happen is your controller is now gonna be charging your phone while it's connected to it. Now we go into stick mode. This is where you can change up which stick mode you wanna be in. So if you wanna change up your settings, you can do it here. You have mode one, two, or three or you can set it up custom, whatever makes sense for you and your flight style. The next down is your button customization. Remember that FM button on your controller? Well, this is where you set that FM button and you have three options and there's two ways that you can activate it. I wish they would have done just all three because it doesn't make sense that you have three options and two ways to activate it, but it is what it is. So there are two ways you activate it is you click once or you double click it. You could have put a triple click too, whatever. All right, so if you tap once, you could set it to recenter gimbal, auxiliary LED, or toggle map live view. So typically I just have my click one on toggle map and live view. That way I don't have to actually tap the screen when I'm flying. And then double tap, I recenter gimbal because it's really nice to have that option to be able to boom, bring your gimbal back. Now, if you are flying later at night, I might go in and change the setting to the auxiliary LED just so you can flip that on and off easily. You might be out flying and you just wanna see where it is, pop it on, boom, it's a bright light in the sky. Now underneath that, you have your RC calibration. You're not gonna need to do this unless you are having issues with your controller. And then last on the control setting is your flight tutorial. So highly suggest if you're a new flyer, you go through this flight tutorial. DJI is gonna give you some more information on how to be a successful flyer. Okay, next menu setting is all about your camera. So first is your format, whether you're gonna shoot MP4 or MOV. Next is your color profile. So this is where you swap between normal and cine like D. For me, I always shoot Cine Lake D because I do color grading, but if you're new to flying and you're not gonna do that much editing in post or you just wanna share quickly on social media, use the normal because that's gonna be a baked in look. Cine Lake D is flatter, so it gives you more room to color grade. Now underneath that is your coding format. You can shoot in H.264 or H.265. You can have anti-flicker. I just leave mine on auto. Underneath that is an option to do video subtitles. Now let's go down to general. You have your histogram, so let's turn that on, go back to your main screen, and it'll pop up with this histogram in the middle of the screen. So this is showing all your exposure values from dark to light. So you could use your finger and move this around anywhere on your screen or click the X and it will turn off. The next is your overexposure warning. So it's gonna show you on the screen visually when you're overexposing. Now this is great when you wanna get better looking footage because you don't want your skies to blow out. You don't want them completely bright white. And this is really helpful when you're shooting on auto because 
Auto might say, this is the exposure that I think is best, but the skies are blowing out. So that would give you a good indication to bring your exposure compensation down to like a negative one or negative two. And then you'll see that the skies are no longer overexposing because you have this overexposure warning on. Underneath that is your grid lines. So these are different ways to just be able to frame up your image. I just turn on all three. So you have your thirds, you have your cross, and then you have your center indication. White balance is auto and manual. So you can go in here and change your white balance manually. So if you don't want it fluctuating and you just want to set your white balance, you go in here and you do it manually or you click auto. Now the next option is to auto sync HD photos. That's going to bring it onto your phone. And then again, just like the pre-flight checklist, you have your internal storage here and then cache while recording. So if this is turned on, basically it's going to be recording another version of the video because all the videos on the drone itself. So this cache recording basically records what the controller is seeing minus all of the you know, controls around the image. So this allows you to store a version of the footage that the phone is seeing. And underneath that you have max video cache capacity. So what happens is once it hits the max capacity, it's going to start deleting the old files automatically. And you, on the bottom you have reset camera settings and this is a factory reset. Next menu option is about your transmission. So you could do definition, normal or HD, I fly with HD. Your frequency, you can use 2.4, 5.8 or dual band. Underneath that you have your channel mode, whether auto or manual, I just leave it on auto. And that's all you have on transmission. So if you're having issues with your transmission, you can go in here and tweak your settings a little bit, but you know, I've had no issues with the factory settings, so I just leave them as is. Now on the last tab, you have your about, and this is all your information about the drone. You could check for updates for your firmware and your FlySafe database, and it shows your app version, it shows your serial numbers and all of that. The last menu I wanna go through is right above the record button. So this is all your camera settings, and these are important so that you can get the best looking footage out of your camera. So let's just go over photo first. So let's click it into photo mode. A few options here, you have single, you have 48 megapixel, you have a smart photo, and you have AEB, which basically takes a series of photos, whether it's three or five. And what that does is it takes three different pictures at three different exposure values. Now underneath this is your video options. In your first menu, you have normal, HDR, or slow motion. So under normal, you have 4K, 2.7K, 1080p. And then if you're in the normal setting, you can do your 4K 60 frames per second. Now, if you go to HDR, now it's gonna limit you to 30 frames, 25 or 24 frames in all modes. Now, when you go to slow motion, you only have a 1080p function and you can do 240 or 120. Now, something to note about this drone is when you're doing something like active track, it goes to 4K 30 automatically. And when you use quick shots, it's gonna go to 1080p and it's gonna put it into your normal color settings. So you can't use Cine like D in your quick shot mode. Now, the next option underneath this is your quick shots and this is where you're gonna activate it. So when you're flying, I can't do it now because I'm not flying, but you'll click this button and it's gonna show all the different quick shots that you have. You're gonna set your center mark and then it's gonna go through and do the quick shot for you when you hit go. Now, the last option is your 8K hyperlapse mode. So you could do free, which is just go in the direction of wherever you point the sticks. You could do a circle, you can do a course lock or you can do a waypoint. So different options to be able to do a hyperlapse and you just gotta figure out what settings work best for you. To use the active track on this drone is super simple. You actually don't have to click any buttons. All you need to do is draw a box using your finger on the screen around the object that you wanna track. Now you have three different options in terms of your active track. This middle option just points the drone at what you wanna film, but if you move further away, it's not gonna follow you. To the right of that is your orbit, so it's gonna keep your subject centered and move around in either direction. And you can tell the speed of the orbit by using this little slider here and then hitting go. And on the other side, you have your follow mode, which you could follow right behind your subject and it will just follow wherever the subject goes. Or you have the parallel option, which will keep to the drone off to the side and keep your subject centered as you move. And when you wanna stop tracking your subject, you can hit stop and then you hit the little X here on the green box. With any of these kind of features, I highly suggest taking some time, going out and playing with these and just testing them out one by one. Really go through and understand what each one does before you try to get in a situation where you're like, hey, I wanna get a hyperlapse out of this really cool scene but you don't know which one's gonna make it look the best. So really take some time and practice with these modes because once you have an understanding of what everything does, then it's gonna be much easier to get better footage when you're out flying and you're in some really cool situations. 
So a couple notes for your first flight. One is you wanna have a full charge on your battery of your drone and also of your controller. You also wanna have your phone at full charge so there's no options for something to drop out. Now next is you're gonna to want to put your propellers on correctly and make sure they're all tight. Put your drone somewhere where it can easily take off and land. And then the first thing that you wanna do before you even start flying and getting those cool shots is take the drone up, let it hover for like 30 seconds and then land it. Use the auto feature and also just use the thumb controllers. So if you push both controllers inward, it's gonna turn on the drone and then you push up on the left hand side, it's gonna take the drone off. That's how you do it manually. Auto, you go in the menu system, you click the auto button and it's gonna auto take off. Let it hover, now do the same thing in reverse. Use the auto setting to land it. Okay, great, now bring it back up. Now use your sticks to land it. To land your drone, all you have to do is pull down on the left hand stick controller. It's gonna land, keep holding down and eventually shut off. So for your first time flying this drone, I really highly suggest going somewhere where you have no obstructions anywhere around you. You wanna be somewhere that's big, open. You wanna make sure there's no warnings, there's no airports, nothing but nearby. You wanna have complete freedom to just play around. Because the first few times that you fly this drone, you really just wanna play with the controller, play with all the settings. So if you're somewhere where you're worried about people, you're worried about restrictions about flying here, you're worried about the weather or the trees that are nearby, then it's gonna be harder for you to learn the drone. So I highly suggest find a big open field. I like to go out to the desert where there's no one around. I could sit out there for hours, go through multiple batteries, and nobody's gonna bug me. So let's go over a few things that I do to get the best looking footage out of my drone. So first, I fly with Cine Light D, and I fly at 4K 60 frames per second. This gives me the most flexibility when I'm editing to be able to not only shoot in a flatter setting, but then I can slow down the footage and get even smoother shots. Now, in terms of flying, I flip it into sport mode and I get my drone to where I wanna actually start shooting and then I flip it into tripod mode. Tripod mode's great to be able to get smooth cinematic looking footage. Now, to get the best looking exposure, I either flip it into manual or I use my exposure lock. You don't want the exposure adjusting as you're flying. And when it comes to white balance, the auto white balance works pretty well. However, if you've noticed that it starts fluctuating at all, I would highly suggest putting it into manual and really setting it. But you gotta make sure that if your situation changes that you go in and you adjust your white balance. I wish the white balance was somewhere a little bit more accessible than going into the menu system. Now to get better looking shots, you don't always wanna do full force on the thumb controllers. You wanna ease it. So I do a quarter or a half in a direction in tripod mode, and that allows you to get slower looking footage. Now the right thumb controller, when you push it forward, it's going to move forward. When you bring it back, it's gonna move backwards. When you move it to the left, it's going to move to the left to the side, and when you move it right, it's gonna go right to the side. Now on the left thumb controller, when you push up, it's gonna move up in the sky, and when you push down, it's gonna bring it down. Now the left and right rotate the drone, so it's kind of like a pan on a camera. So for new flyers, what I highly suggest to get better looking footage is to pick one direction and just do one direction to start. So just fly forwards, or just fly backwards, or just fly to the side, one way, left or right. Now you could do up or down, or you could do a slow rotation around. This is a great way to start getting good footage without a ton of skill. You just put it in tripod mode, and then adjust your speed based on how much you're pressing on the joystick. Now, once you've mastered the skills of one direction, you start combining them. Now, what you'll do is use your left joystick and your right joystick and use both of them to create these more dynamic looking shots. So for example, the one of the ones that I use all the time, I'll use the right joystick, I'll point left or right, and then I'll use the left joystick and point left or right and create an arc around an object. Now, yes, there are ways that you can automate this, but there doesn't always work as perfectly as you will want. Now, doing two to three motions at once is really getting into some advanced level flying, and it's one of those things you really just need to practice, practice, practice. So get good at flying in one direction, and then start adding potentially two directions. One thing you don't wanna do is just be flying willy-nilly and doing like this all over the place. It just doesn't look that good. One of the biggest tips I can give you is avoid jerky motion because any jerky motion is gonna call attention to the camera movement. And as soon as you call attention to it, it's not gonna look as good. Well, 
So let's dig into color grading and I'm just gonna briefly go through some ideas around color grading. And if you wanna dig deeper into this, I'll put links down below in the description to my full color grading tutorials. And I have a few that I've done around the Mavic Mini that apply to this as well. And you can do some pretty cool stuff with the color grade. So when you're shooting Cine Like D, you're gonna get a flatter setting. So that means there's less contrast and there's less saturation. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is add contrast. And then you're gonna add some saturation. Now what you don't wanna do is add so much contrast that your whites blow out. Ideally, when you're shooting Cine Like D, the goal is to preserve your highlights, but also preserve the darker elements of your video. That way you can do some different things with color grading so that you can see more of your image. Now just doing these tweaks from contrast to saturation, your footage is gonna look great already. Now what you can do from here is add a little bit warmer tones, some reds, some yellows, and that will end up giving you more of that warm feel to your footage. Now adding some warm tones will really give the footage a different quality. It gives you kind of that sunrise, sunset feel. And a note on sunrise and sunset. The closer you fly to sunrise or sunset, this is called golden hour or magic hour, you will get better looking footage. Try to shoot in ways where your sun is not right directly in frame. And if it is, try to do it when the sun is super low in the sky because you'll be able to get better looking footage. When you shoot high noon, it's right above you. It's like dead straight down. You're not gonna get the best looking footage. You really wanna play with your shadows and the dark side of your subjects. So for example, I was flying super early in the morning in the desert and you have all the Joshua trees. I have my Jeep driving through the scene. Now when you look at this side and you shoot from where the sun direction is, it's a very washed out looking image. It's not very good. But if you shoot where the sun is off to your side or a little bit behind, you get more contrast and it really makes your footage pop. So time of day and the direction in which you point your drone are gonna have a huge effect. And then you use Cine Like D and do a little bit of color grading and then you can really make your footage pop. Now, like I said, I have a ton of tutorials on advanced color grading. This is just some quick things to think about. So if you wanna dig deeper into color grading, I highly suggest going down in the description and checking those out. All right, so now that you have an understanding of how to fly the DJI Mavic Air 2 and you understand everything about it, I highly suggest you check out one of these two videos here. One of them goes into a color grading technique that I love doing with my drone footage. It's using a gradation filter. And the video underneath that is the biggest mistakes that new flyers make starting out. And I highly suggest you check that one out so you don't make any mistakes and end up crashing your drone. All right, guys, I'll see you over there.